All right. So hello, everyone. I only see two to three students here. So we're going to go ahead and begin um, in about one or two minutes. You notice that I'm sitting outside, and that's true. I'm sitting uh, right near a Starbucks um, because I thought, you know, we, we could continue. It would be open until eight o'clock at night, but really it's open until eight o'clock at night for the drive through. But drinking inside, it was at seven, and it's currently seven o'clock. So I'm crying in death, just like my shirt says. Um, it's a perfect theme, it's, it's totally matching my experience right now. So I bought this shirt from Instagram, just some deaf guy is the name of the handle, some deaf guy. He grew up um, oral and he learned ASL later at a later age. So he be, there's a lot of, he makes a lot of uh, deaf related jokes, things that are funny. If you want to follow his Instagram, go ahead, feel free to do that. All right, so now, okay, uh, are you able to hear the interpreter for those of you who are in the meeting? You can either message or say something in the chat or give me a thumbs up. It seems that most of you can hear her um, for the people who are here. So we're gonna go ahead and begin, perfect. So welcome to ASL2 class. Wow, um, I just uh, uh, just checked the roster. Three of you are from my previous class, ASL level one. So congratulations, you made it this far and now you're ready to um, engage in the next four weeks. Those of you who are taking classes with me, maybe it's your first time and perhaps you're not familiar with my structure or my teaching style, various things, but I'm here right now to explain that to you. So again, welcome to ASL2 class. Just a little bit of a warning. I do understand that this class is only four weeks long. It's quite fast. Um, I have condensed it based on the 16 week course. So for example, Example, within a 16-week course, um, that's what a typical semester would be like. Um, every two hours, you know, you'd have a two-hour class twice a week. But I've condensed that into a four-week course. So that means every day, it's going to be a longer amount of hours per day. So please pay attention to how this class is structured um, so you're able to keep up um, and you need to manage your time. It's very important if you feel like this is too much, I recommend that you take the alternative 16 week course. Um, but if you're willing to do it, um, you can really focus and roll your sleeves up, you'll be able to do it. So perhaps you're tra traveling to Europe, Hawaii or Mexico, that's fine. Just make sure that you are managing your time. Time management really is kind of your friend for this course for the next four weeks. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and discuss what you should be looking at. Or I'm gonna go through the syllabus here. So this is orientation day. Okay, it's loading. All right, so now this is your course structure. This is how I, what's going on here? You'll see a uh, week number one, you'll see the assignments right here. Follow exactly how things are laid out. So you go down, you'll see week two, and then you'll see week three, the tasks. Week four, everything is broken down in this fashion. Yes, it is a four week course um, and there are five units. So really you have to make sure that you're following the course schedule that I've laid out for you. We're gonna go ahead and review and take a look at what this looks like in Canvas. We'll scroll down. All right, so to be truthful and honest with you, you 
can get through your worksheets um, and your unit exams if you're doing well, really the most important thing that you it, your grade really depends on is if you want to get an above average letter uh, above a C in order to earn an A or a B, let's say you have to do the unit projects, um, all of the unit projects and the interactive dialogue chain. You'll see that right here. Then the third thing that you're gonna to need to do is a Zoom partners. I'm gonna explain what to expect with that assignment. So the unit projects really base, it's based on a cumulative, um, it's based cumulatively based on that unit. So from the previous units as well. So for example, you, the unit project number six, you should expect to be able, they expect you to be able to assign as long as you're following the rubric that I've outlined. If you follow the rubric and you check off all the items, you will do just fine. And then, you know, really I wanna see your creativity. And the reason why we have this rub, uh, unit project is to replace the midterm fine, uh, midterms and the final exams. So we won't have a midterm or a final exam. Instead, we've replaced that with the unit projects. Unit projects really emphasize your creativity and I wanna see your creativity. Um, and I wanna see that in relation to your continued growth in sign language and signing. I'll show you what that would look like um, by the unit number six, unit project number six, as an example, we can take a Look at that. So you'll see the requirements below, right here. So you see the requirements, the list of requirements. As long as you follow those requirements, you will do just fine. If your video is one minute um, and, and you meet all the requirements, great. You'll be, if you're, you know, if your minute, if your video is five minutes and you meet all the requirements, you'll also do just fine. I wanna show what you're gonna do with uh, the interactive dialogue chain. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So you can take a look at this. There's a video here. He's saying, hi, I'm John. So perfect. Okay, so now you see the, the interactive dialogue chain, turn-taking sort of chain. That means that I, I will start with my vlog and my video and I'll be signing it. I'll introduce myself and then I'll make a comment in relation to what is being asked. So it really depends on the question. So for unit six, it's in relation to hobbies. So I'll go ahead and discuss that. And then I'll ask two questions in relation to that. And then the next person, your classmate for this uh, case, it will be this person and she's going to respond to two of my questions. And then she'll make some comments, expand, and then she's gonna ask two questions and then so on and so forth down the chain of people. The purpose for this is to make sure that you're able to understand each other receptively. You'll notice that there's two questions and you go, okay, I have uh, it's my turn and now I need to make a comment and then I'll ask two questions for the next person and then they'll respond, so on and so forth down the chain. What I'm looking for is that you're following the rules and you know you're making you're responding to the questions and then you're asking two questions. If you do that, I will give you full credit. If you sign something and you make errors in your signing, that's fine. I'll comment for you to review. I'm not going to take off points necessarily. Um, if you're doing something on purpose and you're making mistakes, that's unacceptable. I might remove some um, points and make a comment. But I want to see what your receptive skills are in order to be able to interact with your classmates. 
So the third thing is the most important thing out of these three. My beard look looks extra long today. Wow. I'm not really used to looking at myself. Okay. So you'll see this right here, Zoom partners. So you're gonna choose four scripts and one activity below. So that means that, let's take a look. Here's the scripts. It looks like a lot, yes. When you read it all, but the purpose is that I want you to continue your language development and that's going to happen over time. You're going to have a zoom partner for the next four weeks. It's going to be the same partner. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this zoom and you're going to do a self recording. You're going to record yourselves. Um, and you're going to use sort of any of these scripts so for example, script number two, it's like the person, I'm person number one, and there's a person number two. So I'm, we're going to sign back and forth to each other and that's going to be it. And the next script and so on and so forth. Um, but you'll see, you know, the activity is kind of open and or ended answers. So you'll see on the list, there's a question, and then you're going to go ahead and have to respond to each other. And when you do that, if you do that and meet all the requirements, I will give you full credit. If you took ASL one class with me just before you're familiar with this, if you're new, I'll show you what it looks like. Luckily for you, ASL two, um, you'll be able to see this at the same time. Let's see, I think there are, no. All right. Really, I can't find what I did previously. So what you'll see is very similar. So you'll have to pick two scripts and one activity and two grammar prompts. So you're going to have to do actually all of these things. I'm going to go ahead and show you what, like give you some idea about what I'm looking for in regards to classifiers, two classifier prompts right here. You have to pick two classifiers, uh, two classifier prompts, which if we scroll down, we can see. So for example, this right here, a breakfast bar, CLL, -L, it means your hand shape. Um, so breakfast bar is like this, like a bar that you would eat, bar. And that's what the classifier hand shape looks like or bar, like you're eating at a breakfast bar and there's like um, food laid out on a table or something. This is a hand shape like this, pool pool like this so you're outlining the perimeter of the pool like a rectangular excuse my finger spelling oh, my spelling here rectangles not spelled correctly so is that understand or you're going to have to follow these if you do all of this you will get full credit You see the interpreter switch just now, which made me think of why the interpreters are switching, but that's part of the profession when interpreters are working and they usually switch time from to give themselves a mental break every 15 to 20 minutes because there's a lot of processing. So just watching ASL, they have to interpret into English. And so that's why they work in teams. So if you're thinking about becoming an interpreter, then 
this is the opportunity you can ask me questions or any interpreters that you see for their questions. Moving along with the orientation of this class, we'll go into the modules. Oh, also, so if you forget different vocabulary terms, you can click what's the sign right here. Just type in the vocabulary word in which you're looking for a sign for, and it will show up with the sign. Okay. Um, and make sure you pay attention to all the announcements that I post. I have announcements from past uh, June 24th, that, that was the earliest. I thought it was a good time to give you a heads up, even though it's beginning before the class has started. And that was talking about time management. So again, I want if you want to review the video, you can go ahead and look at that. Today is Monday, so this is supposed to be due today, Monday, June 24th. And then it follows the deadlines for the upcoming assignments. All right. It's important that you keep track of the schedule and then you will be fine if you stay on top of your assignments. You should know where to find the present, the lectures, as well as the PowerPoints. You're going to go back to modules if you would like to find those. And you see it's listed here. So we're starting unit 6.1. I encourage you to download the actual PowerPoint as well as open the lecture video in which I've created. You can do that here for the PowerPoint. You'll see all the slides. This just gives you an idea. Please pay attention to the grammar lessons. I want to emphasize that. If you just learn vocabulary, but don't understand ASL grammar, it will be hindering in your production. ASL, <clears throat> you know, whether you learn that or just ASL, or and also learning the grammar, please, especially for those of you who want to become interpreters or deaf educators or counselors and work in the field with deaf people. It's very important. <clears throat> it will become very handy if you can learn the grammar. And going back, I'm gonna also help you find where you can find the lecture videos. It's the link right here. I've created a video. And that's where you can find those lectures. <clears throat> you may not recognize that person who has shorter hair and shaved beard, but right now I'm in my own phase of hair growth. And so that was from back in a couple of times, I think it was in ASL4 and um, I was shaved my hair my beard and I had short hair. So you can enjoy all the lecture videos of me with different hair. So <laughs> let me think if there's anything else I needed to mention. It's important that you watch the lecture videos. There is no spoken English because this is an immersive class which means I expect you to be able to develop your receptive skills and your expressive skills to be able to sign. Let me think if there's anything else I wanted to share with y'all. Making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay. So now I am sure you have a better idea of the expectations of this class. 
So I want to take this opportunity to let you know <clears throat> when you're submitting your homework and watching the videos and everything, make sure to do it on time before the deadlines actually come about because I'll be grading everything usually on Sunday or Monday whenever I can get to it on those two days. So please keep up with the class. If you need extra time, you can. I can only allow that for this first week. The following weeks, I can't allow it because it's a short session of a semester. So please follow all of the due dates and deliver them on time. And even though, even if you're traveling, just like I will be traveling as well, but it's important, both of us need to do our work on time. So the deadline is the last day to turn it in and it follows specific standard time. So keep that in mind if you're traveling at other locations with different time zones. So I'm gonna open it up, any questions from anyone? You can go ahead and ask using, oh, somebody asked in the chat. Will all the modules be open all four weeks? Yes, they will. All of them. Um, I will not torture you like that and only have several of them open. But if you work ahead, it doesn't mean that I'll be grading ahead as well. You're gonna, I'm gonna be following my own timeline when it comes to grading. So keep that in mind. Somebody else says, are there instructions for uploading the videos? Oh, thank you for the reminder, yes. I will show you how to upload videos. Give me one minute to set things up, okay? So I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you what to do when you are filming. For example, for the projects or for the Zoom one or the interactive dialogue chain and a few other assignments like the SOAR and the production test. So those, I strongly encourage you to upload to YouTube um, for two specific reasons. For you to be able to keep it and then when you look back on it, you can say that you were such a cute signer back then in ASL2. Or the other reason is just for efficiency reasons, that's the only purpose. So I know you also want to keep it, your videos to look back on. And it's great, you can make memories for yourselves. I teach many students in ASL1 and they can barely sign in ASL2, they should be more proficient. And the time they get to ASL4, they can really sign. And if they want to become an interpreter, then they get even more fluent. And then you can look back and see your progression of learning the language. So I'll show you how to do that. Obviously to upload, there's pretty easy steps to follow. So this is, you open YouTube and you go into your channel and then it will pop up, upload bills, you, videos. You can select your file from your desktop. I'll just make something up to put in there. <laughs> and the most important thing to do is to make sure Make sure it's accessible for kids. So people under 18. And then make sure it's vis for visibility under that tab. Make sure you either select unlisted or you can select public. Either of those two options to make sure that I have access to your video. And then after you've uploaded, so say if it's public, you publish it, but you need to upload it to Canvas. So I'll show you how to do the specific method. So say if I'm 
doing this video? Pick one. I just picked one. You're going to click the share button right here. And you're going to click the embed. Copy this URL code. If you're using this to upload, Then you go to reply. Go to the embed function right here next to zero words. Click that to open the embed tool. And then paste. And then click the embed icon to close it again and then it should be ready, uploaded right there. And then you can click reply. I suggest doing that method so that everyone can see each other's videos right off the bat compared to uploading a whole file and somebody has to download a file, it makes it easier. So please only use the embed option if you're using, when you're using YouTube. Let me look at the, the next question that was in the chat. Oh, yes. You can copy the link and also post that. And I encourage you to embed it as well. It just makes it easier to peruse. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Casey. Thank you for typing out the whole instructions. That works too. Any other questions? Sorry for our background. It's maybe a little bit noisy. <clears throat> It just means that the earth is still rotating. That's why there's sounds in the background. <laughs> oh, Ashley. Okay. Well, thank you, Ashley. Okay. I think I've covered everything for this orientation. I want to emphasize time management in this class. If you don't follow time management, you will have lots of issues because it's a short session. Um, the first week I will be nice, but then after that, I'm expecting everything to be submitted on time. Oh. Also, I wanted to add before I forget, if you don't have a partner for the Zoom partner, there's a way where which you can find a partner. You can, just one second, let me pull it up. Go to the people tab right here on the left. Click that. And you see there's a bunch of people right there. Those are your classmates. So you can contact them and ask if they wanted to partner for the next four weeks. When you've connected, you're gonna keep with the same partner the whole four weeks, all right? Any, any other last questions before we close out this orientation? How many of you feel a little bit nervous or maybe you feel confident? Anyone? <laughs> or do you know you can also use the interpreter and use your voice and just talk to me if you would like to as well? Do you have any other questions or comments? Okay. Seems like everyone is happy. Oh, somebody put something in the chat. Yeah, <clears throat> it is normal. And also I do realize that, um, you know, I made an announcement. I probably will today or tomorrow, but I'm going to add a ASL one playlist as you will, so that you can review ASL one grammar and vocabulary if you need a little refresher. 
just for your own benefit. When was your intermission class, last winter? Yeah, I did winter, and then for spring, I did the anatomy. John was going to say, John said, that's okay, that's fine. I mean, I'm sure you're going to do okay in this class. Yeah, who was your ASL1 teacher? You. Oh, you're talking to the, you're talking to the other student. Yeah, the other student who mentioned that, Anita. Uh, oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know that. Um, I really appreciate that information. Hmm. Yeah, thank you for letting me know that. Yeah. To be honest with you, ASL um, is a visual language. That's how deaf people survive um, and have uh, for centuries. So, you know, just look at the positive side for this. ASL1, perhaps your teacher used their voice a lot. That's, it is what it is. ASL2, we're starting now, two, three, and four. Um, I know it may feel like you're learning, you know, there's a learning curve, but you'll be able to uh, succeed. I have a question for the um, partner dialogue for Zoom, if we do the Zoom together, are we able to talk to each other to like make a plan and then and then record quietly? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's why we set up the dialogue so you can practice signing together um, to have it feel more like a human interaction. Um, some on online courses I've seen, they're more like the teacher to student, you know, it's just them all the way. And I kind of disagree with that. I believe the teachers and students should be able to give each other feedback, um, but it really should be student to student. That's more a natural development. Um, and that's how you're going to develop signing skills uh, naturally. That's why I've added this dialogue chain plus the Zoom activity those two things. That's why, you know, there's many scripts and activities that I've posted in there. That's from um, lecture videos that I've gotten in the past. Um, so I want you to watch that. You can watch it as many times as you want. Um, it's kind of repetitive a little bit. And to be honest with you, ASL one and two is repetitive. It just is. Um, ASL three, on the other hand, is less repetitive. And then, you know, you kind of become more, you know, your own person with the language. And that's when you kind of start to explore um, and analyze how to use ASL uh, to the best of your ability. So um, don't be hard on yourselves. Take advantage of this opportunity now. Are you ready for this challenge? You know, it's a, it's, it is going to be a good experience for you. Um, in case you meet a deaf person, you'll be able to sign or a person who's a CODA. A CODA is a child of a deaf adult and they are hearing people, but they sign. Um, their, their parents are deaf. Um, they don't use their voice, even though they're hearing as well. So I want you to be ready for those people, um, even in the interpreting community, um, deaf or hearing adults who are signing, even though they're hearing, they would rather sign out of respect for deaf, um, folks. So just in general, um, deaf people are the ones who developed the language for survival purposes. So I encourage you to take a deaf culture class and then we can expand on that and I can okay. explain that more in depth and you'll say, oh, I see why X, Y, and Z happens with the language. Yes, we do have deaf people who speak. This is true. Um, but again, this class is designed for developing your receptive and signing production skills. 
I hope that's helpful. Any more questions or challenge, challenging questions? Anya? So Anya was asking where she could give uh, more ASL uh, practice. And, and John's asking, do you live in North County? Where do you live? In San Diego? Can you spell that again? I am P. So IB, Imperial Beach. Wow. I go to IB for my haircuts. That's where I get my haircut. <laughs> um, so there are deaf, uh, there's a deaf stylist who lives in IB, um, a deaf owned business. And I see her and she cuts my hair. She's deaf. Anyway. Um, okay. So, so you live in IB. Hmm. Um, there are several uh, gatherings, but one big bonus is that you live near National City um, and Deaf Community Services DCS is located there. That's where their headquarters are, is. Um, they have many events. It's a, a good, adva big advantage. Um, do you, I think there's a gathering, a coffee gathering in Chula Vista. Most uh, parents, uh, they're mostly parents of deaf children um, or CODAs. I know some of those people, they're very friendly. Um, also in Tijuana, Mexico, uh, they have some gatherings there, but they sign in LSM, Mexican Sign Language. So uh, for now, though, we're building your friend. You should build focus on building your friend circle. Okay. Yes, anytime. Welcome to class. All right, so who else? Does anybody else have a question? Any questions before we wrap up? All right. Okay, so if there's any questions or concerns, you can go ahead and email me. If you look uh, at the grammar lesson and you're not sure that you understand it, so for example, there's a rhetorical question, or so for example, if I'm signing, I'll say I go store because and my eyebrows are up, and I sign because, you know, your eyebrows are up or down. Um, I say I go to the store because I need an apple, um, or the other example would be like, why I go store? I need apple. That's a rhetorical question, an example of one. Another example would be a conditional clause. Conditional clause, sorry, thank you. Conditional clause, so I can go ahead, I'll go ahead and teach you what that means while we're here, because it'll be part of your assignment for this week anyway. So for example, if you start with a conditional clause at the beginning of a sentence, if you study hard, your eyebrows are up, you will pass. Your eyebrows go down, okay? So if you study hard, you will pass. So if you decide to use a conditional clause at the end of a sentence, vice versa, you will pass class if you study hard. Did you see the difference? The clause, my eyebrows didn't go up because it was at the end of the sentence, and that's a specific example. So if you see grammar and you don't understand it, please email me. I would rather that you understand the grammar um, so that your life in ASL three and four, it will be much easier and you will acquire language easier. That's my goal. But again, ASL three and four, you'll see some review um, because some students take class classes at other colleges. Um, you see, so we need, we've made that um, so we review things before being in class. 
Someone's talking to John. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Someone was talking to me. Okay. So are there any more questions? Yeah. Seems like everything's going to work out. I'm really excited to work with you. Um, all of these students, he's listing off names, Anya, Debbie, Casey, who's not Casey, the three of you, you're going to do a good job. I'm very proud of you. Um, you can do it, please. I'm emphasizing time management. Use your time wisely. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close. I'm going to upload this video. Uh, the orientation video for anyone to watch. Okay, I'm going to close.